Hello, how are you? On behalf of the Badminton Pan American Confederation, we give you the warmest welcome to our Coach Corner program. My name is Adrián Gomez, and today I am pleased to be your moderator from San Jose in Costa Rica. In today's session, we have the pleasure to welcome one of the most emblematic researchers in French sport. I'm talking about Thierry Soler from France, who will talk about a very interesting topic, the long-term follow-up strategy of the players of the French Federation. But before leaving you with him, I would like to read a short summary about our guest's career. From, from January 2004 to June 2013, he was a national coach of the French Football Federation. From January 2015 to September 2016, he was a national coach of the Winter Sports French Federation. From June 2017 to February 2022, he was head of the Performance Department of the National Institute of Sports, Skill and Performance in Paris. Good afternoon, Thierry. Welcome to our program. Thank you for sharing with our audience and welcoming us to your home in Paris, France. Please. Share your screen. The floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone can hear me well. Thank you very much for this honor, for inviting me to speak here. Thank you to the French Badminton Federation uh, for allowing me to accept this uh, invite from Badminton Pan Am. As you heard before, my professional experience was not really uh, much about badminton, so I cannot really speak about badminton, but about sports in general, and specifically about the sports that I've been working with, the ones that I've working, I've worked the most with before joining the French uh, Federation, of course. As I was before, I uh, have a sports background. I think this is part of a personal of a person's uh, life. When I was young, I played football mainly. And when I started uh, studying uh, sports sciences in the French Alps, I started uh, with uh, football, which was new in France. And this allowed me to be a pioneer, um, part of the pioneer team that practiced this sport. And actually this built my personality because there was not a well-structured organization. It was up to us to create something depending on our imagination, to create this world in France. And that's why I practiced this sport, uh, football. And then I continued as a coach working on this. And as a, I was also a coach uh, in athletics and then uh, in football. And I have a certificate in that. So I uh, became a sports coach at a professional level. And then I worked on organizations management. And that's how I started this career. There were a lot of sources of inspiration. And this is the work that we have been doing for 10 years. Which, is, uh, uh, which was done in Canada, this long-term uh, development that inspired me and made me ask certain questions about the long-term uh, training that we had for football in France. And with th that idea of, of the structure of, of the work of an athlete, that's how I started my work, my professional work that I do nowadays. And this is in terms of sports development. And to become a professional from a very young age, uh, but to work in with the Federation and see what's the long term performance. And that's why we started making changes in the badminton French Federation. And we saw that there were different stages in the organization. We have the young athletes who are identified by the uh, Avenir, um clubs and they are in the hope of the sport and then we have some 
competi- competitions, which are a benchmark. And then we also have uh, Olympic sports and Paralympic sports. And it's also important to work at a long term so we can help uh, each athlete to um, reach its high, their highest potential. We also worked in uh, the Netherlands and that allowed us to assess and evaluate the um, organizations, how they are contributing to the performance, uh, to the sports performance of athletes who are at different stages within a federation. So with these two sources of inspiration, I started working on how we could uh, set a long-term monitoring Uh, in order to help athletes. I'm going to go back to these structures because there are different stages uh, here. But our logic was, how can we take a quick snapshot of these athletes and see more or less in this image, what's the psychological uh, state of this athlete, how he or she works, what's the his or her motivation, what's how can we do the whole monitoring uh, during uh, training sessions? Now that I think about it, and I've thought about this for a very long time, the uh, uh, rhythm of the life of the Federation and our ability to do these, uh, uh, what we can do for a Federation that affects the strategy and the dream but what we also have to do uh, a health uh, follow-up, nutrition, and see the history of the athlete. And in case someone has some injury, we have to understand what's a technical, tactical aspect of that uh, athlete. So we actually wanted to uh, focus on the first period of time, which is to work during this first stage as uh, fast as possible. Once we've identified uh, these uh, young athletes, the younger the better, when they are 10 or 12 years old, uh, we, we, we had to be able to see the whole structure and understand how can we make him develop appropriately so he can con- so he can achieve his highest his per- personal best so we thought about this federal strategy of development in the long term of the athlete so if we go back to this uh, schema or structure in order to identify the psychomotor skills we can see a snapshot of the athlete in different aspects. For example, their posture, also identify the mobility of their joints to do an ener- an ener- energetic and mu- muscular uh, uh, motor profile, and also to be able to identify how they behave at a psychological level and cognitive level. And this is the, uh, the idea that we have of the athlete and that gives us an idea of everything we can do during training sessions and this allows us to to have a structural a structural balance specializing uh, in the sport in terms of n of energy, uh, muscles, and motor skills. We also have the youth centers and other training centers for young athletes in Paris. And we also have a whole organization has been created and there are several tests for this sport and we can monitor this uh, sports development throughout these tests. And this will allow us, this allows us to develop a profile of the power of these athletes and see what's the right balance what we can obs- what we can observe in order to help this, the athlete we also do a neuromuscular test but we also do strength test 
in order to identify the 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 strength of the legs of the athletes with four complementary exams and we also have uh, a sheet that shows the motor dynamic ability of the athlete which is a pushable movement screen and that's adapted in order to identify those imbalances especially in the uh, lower part of the limbs like the, the below the knee and all of those forces related to the muscles in order to identify them but once again all of this is in order to have a general idea of the balances or lack of balance uh, of the athletes in order to work in a prophylactic way in order to protect the, the athlete and to incorporate that in the different exercises that we're going to do for the warm-up I think that that's very routine, that's very routinely done, but we're trying to identify this now. Now, the other thing that we have to do is to identify the profiles because it is important to consider performance and to be able to understand what's the motivation or the profile of the athlete. We need to understand the athlete and work with positive communication with the athlete in order to react appropriately and to build a relationship and we should always take into account what the motivation of this athlete is in order to keep it and keep him motivated so this is the first uh, view as i said before this helps uh, us to work of preparing and understanding how our athlete works. The second stage was our ability to monitor everything as a whole, to monitor the training load, but also the performance level, as well as some possible injuries that the athletes may have depending on the capacity of the athlete according to the different tools that we have and the own our own methods that we may use with our athletes so we have a system that has been built in the regional centers and special centers in france with a french society that is called Fusion, Fusion that allows uh, coaches to uh, use these in order to identify the external load that is uh, given to athletes as well as anything else that may cause issues during the training session. And that's what we use. Uh, uh, visually, we use a uh, service of the and the level of fatigue that they that athletes have, the way they train. And what's important to us is to have this platform in order to uh, keep the athlete, because many times coaches used to use uh, or use notebooks and some other way to gather information about an athlete in order to have a dynamic uh, analysis in order to do a dynamic analysis we need to do this in order to propose this to the athlete and of course you should do this in a progressive way we also work with a lot of different uh, associated services or supporting services we, we should have a, lev a level of alert in order to estimate risk so we might not be able to predict but at least estimate uh, situations based on the uh, patterns that we have identified, whether for performance or for some sort of injury, and that will allow us to uh, have a history in the last few weeks in order to see if there might be an injury that might happen and that we could prevent. Maybe some training sessions could have a negative effect in in the athlete so we can analyze all of this with 
the uh, having a, um, a general view of the profile of the athlete based on what we're seeing and also depending on their motor evolution in order to keep balance and avoid uh, any harmful uh, situations and avoid injuries. And now these are aspects that are associated to um, several uh, performance uh, issues. One of them is the life rhythm. Athletes use a lot of the, uh, their time to train and they're able to do all of these activities in an appropriate way. So what happens during the training session? How can we uh, adapt everything he's do he or she's doing in order to make more progress? So in France, the French government worked on this in order to help uh, with the trajectory of athletes. There are studies that have been adapted to their needs in order to see how we can help uh, students become professional athletes without affecting uh, athletes who train every day. We can ask for the help of uh, several researchers that did, um, do certain monitoring and to have a recovery strategy. And we also, we can, and they should also have um, time to relax in order to help with these uh, athlete or benefit these uh, athletes so maybe he or she can take a free day a day off in order to relax with uh, hydrotherapy or with massage or with a, a heat cham chamber and what's important here is to quickly identify everything that may have a benefit for our athletes and to help them understand themselves better so they can have, uh, they can be autonomous and have a better strategy in their recovery. With ISF, we also try to help uh, them with nutritionists. We frequently use. We, we uh, nutritionists help us understand what type of nutrition our athletes should have and that allows us to identify which foods uh, would allow the athletes to be in better shape. And also to uh, compete better and they could also uh, have a better adapted strategy. We have also seen that there is a, a concentration. Uh, there's a group of athletes that uh, breathe differently. They don't all waste uh, uh, water in the same way. So we need to know about, we need to know our athletes and apply uh, certain information throughout their training sessions because it's uh, good to have a nutritional strategy and see what we can use to help athletes. We need to know what they can eat, what they can use, or what can they eat after training sessions, for example, what they can have for dinner. And we need to monitor that in order to uh, really mm, know our athlete. And of course, the last part is, is uh, that athletes need to have some time for themselves following a high-performance strategy. 
There are several things that can be done in order to accompany athletes with an individual coach. It can be a life coach who can accompany them with a specific strategy. I apologize. Okay, so let's continue. I showed you five different sections uh, before a break. We've talked about training, monitoring, and to work on the on lifestyle on the lifestyle of athletes. Uh, how we can work with the recovery of athletes and also. Uh, personal objectives and nutrition, uh, but we also need to, to consider everything related to uh, medical monitoring. And this is what we were uh, able to use in our profile. This can also make us uh, have a better uh, idea of the pathologies that we may have with uh, our joints and prevent accidents. And that's also something that is really important to us to have this information to actually supervise the health of our uh, French athletes. That's something that's necessary. We always need them to pass a medical exam every year. And I insist on this a lot the history of what happens to them and traumatology is fundamental because we can observe that we observe that many athletes may have prioritized uh, chains of muscle pains that could uh, bring systematic traumatology and may quickly affect the, the way in which they react uh, consequently that could affect our athletes another point that Another uh, important point is that we do all of this uh, monitoring with our physiotherapist. We do this uh, throughout the time when there uh, has been a, a, an injury. So this is done in a more organized way. Uh, it, this is a must. We always do it. There, that there's a kinesiologist that is specialized uh, in this and we need to take into account this is a very important period for this uh, injury. We may have, we may find many things that can uh, worsen these problems if we, don't, uh, mo moni if we don't monitor the nutrition, recovery and so on of the athletes so these athletes can actually recover in an appropriate way and we need to accompany them in the best way possible because it's not just important for him to get better but he should feel like he's at a hundred percent again and he has he has recovered at a hundred percent with uh, customized um, support personalized support so we quantify the uh, training load in order to see this information and we also have other questionnaires in order to see how they, the athletes feel during the training sessions and we also have a well-being or wellness uh, survey in order to adapt uh, all of this to the uh, abilities of the athlete. So we develop we have developed this work with the Federation for many years. We've worked on this for many years and we have prepared this material for the different development stages of our athletes. So to us, what's important is for athletes to feel like there's a development link between athletes and coaches, especially since they are young, and then to guide them, technically speaking, in order to improve their level. In order to do this, all of, all of this uh, club network is organized in order to have everything ready 
we have different clubs and they are all ready in order to foresee the uh, work with badminton athletes. Unfortunately, clubs, well, actually, uh, uh, clubs like the competition between uh, young athletes in order to win, but to us, uh, competitions is just to help nurture an athlete. And we need to have a long-term strategy in order to have a good ability to create a network that can actually help athletes in this world of sports so they can actually make uh, progress uh, in the future. Another thing that's important, not only in badminton, but in every sport in France, is to have a shared uh, strategy. I've talked about the Avenir clubs, for example. We have a structure, an Olympic uh, structure with young, young uh, hopes, athletes who are young who are young stars and we need to have fluent communication with them in order to continue working with the different performance factors that we can do in order to help with their development so they can have the best development possible Also, so athletes can actually focus on the competition so they can be ready for competitions. So it's important to have this time to work and to make sure that the level of accompaniment of our athletes is okay so everyone speaks the same language. So this can help athletes to uh, reach their highest level. Well, as I uh, showed you in the beginning, in the first part, uh, we asked our, ourselves a question, but now we have to ask ourselves, why do we do this long-term uh, follow-up? Because it's really important to understand uh, the particularities or the individualization of this training structure why we use this way of training why because not everyone has the same uh, level of fatigue of competent competition technical tactical uh, part uh, competition level so how can we do this actually we need to understand the work that we do with the, the the work that we did with our colleagues with my colleagues in Canada and Norway have uh, shown that, that this helps athletes to be as ready as possible and to do their pers to do their best in order to reach the national level and get uh, higher in their special trajectory or journey and we should always know what what that journey will be with those athletes so they can know what to do in order to make progress every year and also to prevent possible injuries in the athlete to have an individual monitoring and accompany athletes and this would be more of a prophylaxis a protection of the athlete in order to uh, help or prevent injuries in athletes and that's always important it's difficult to see this timeline and the relationship between that training load and prevention and injury prevention 
or to, you know to avoid injuries and chronic fatigue and that's why we need to know uh, the athlete in detail in order to estimate those risk areas and avoid injuries How can we do this? We've talked a lot about the databases or data scientists. And there are different aspects that are not so important to observe. But it's also important to save the historical information of our athlete and do a follow-up. on everything that may affect our athletes. For example, here we have everything related to data or that can create um, a, a, an athlete management system that needs that helps us correlate all the information and we can monitor this information or how we can uh, monitor all of these uh, workload closely and how we can accelerate these uh, mo training load. I know that countries such as Japan have some uh, areas that are connected, some rooms connected, and they connect the information in order to see the intensity of the work that will allow us automatically to qualify the uh, training load. We also have tools for muscle training that help us refine uh, our ability to measure the level in which we are doing our long-term exercises. That's also very interesting the time for physical preparation in order to make sure that we have a good intensity and good intentions as well. Now, we are seeing the long-term uh, load of, of the athlete. We had the heart rate uh, variation, and this is one of the tools that allow us to see the level of the athlete from the moment that they wake up until the end, they allow us to see the availability of some sort of resentment towards the problem they may be with a treatment session. We can actually see the whole hist uh, injury history, everything we can learn about the injury dynamic history history dynamic so we are interested in gathering all of this data in a database of the sort in terms of French badminton we have been talking about the fact that all of this structure is based on uh, a fusion in Paris so this allows us to recover the information in a very detail way in order to recover this every day and actually do an analysis from this point on or from or based on these database we can create a table that can allow us to see the relationship between all of this information pieces of information and between the athlete and the coach I think that some of you have used uh, a similar tool and this allows us to see how we can use this tool but also uh, it helps when we see other persons using it and also uh, add utilities or things that coaches can use and that can help in a more global way. This means that in France we have the ability to use all of these interfaces for our own benefit and they also talked about the sports collective groups and there's a lot of work to be done there in terms of 
video analysis and also a little bit more on the work that our opponents do. But also to be able to identify the structure of the game. And also uh, define with uh, different tools the data engineering, uh, data science. With this information, we can uh, identify certain situations in a video in advance. And with all of these tools, we can do this analysis of the structure of the game. Besides, adding SEP, uh, we work with the National Sports Agency, which is for all Olympic sports, and that allows us to identify which are the most French sports that are already on their way to an Olympic medal in order to uh, have more credits for uh, these uh, athletes. And what's important to us is to uh, gather all of the information uh, in order to win medals after analyzing how much they practice with video analysis so they can see their opponents in order to see to better anticipate our match uh, game. We also have some projects, uh, search projects, in terms of mechanics and work, especially on decision making with research laboratory, laboratories that work with INSEP in order to integrate these researchers on this issue and to have researchers that work with the whole logics of the observation strategy, digital observation strategy. This strategy is very important to us because as I said before, from the very beginning, what's important about these databases is to have the ability to monitor everything, to be able to see and work on the possible correlation uh, between the different individual profiles. So on, at a first stage, this allows us to gather data and see if this can be used. And then we can uh, tune or refine our information so they can be standard. So that information can be standardized, uh, homogeneous, uh, uh, rational, in order to clarify uh, all the information that we can use as coaches and also for the benefit of our athletes so they can become more and more autonomous as well. To finish, I apologize because I won't be able to translate all of this slide, but this represents what we do at INSEP, how we can analyze the data. This is a person who has a meeting, and this person. Um, um, starts this meeting with keywords and graphs in order to show a concept that could be difficult to explain so it can be uh, easier to understand so people can understand it in a in an easy way i know this might be difficult to understand if you don't speak french but it, what's important is that you should work on this every day and you need to observe a lot you should always look after the team and see what you can do also, what's important is how we can transfer these uh, tools uh, for knowledge. And not everything will always be simple. Coaches need to see what they can do with the athlete. So athletes can also provide with complementary aspects that can uh, help a decision-making and improve performance. 
that's on the one hand, but on the other hand, we also have the, the data analysis potential or uh, talent seeking and see what we can do. And you need to check different athletes and, and so they can actually uh, get an adult life being professional athletes. And we need to identify the talents among the different athletes that start with the sport so they can be more and more uh, competitive in the international stage. In other words, what they can do or what we can do so they can win medals. I hope that this presentation was interesting for you. I think that we still have some minutes uh, to exchange ideas. Very well, Thierry. Perfect. Thank you very much. And now we are going to move on to our usual Q&A section. Please, if you have any questions or comments that you would like to share, you can write them down in the chat box. Thierry, your presentation has been very interesting. However, I've had a series of questions that I would like to share with you. You talk about the the whole journey of athletes until becoming to competition athletes or possible Olympic athletes who will participate in the Olympic Games. But when do you start with these programs? How old are athletes when they start? I suppose that that starts uh, the earliest, I mean, the sooner the better. The good thing is that we need that we can uh, develop the motor skills. I mean, every skill at a global level in a very fun way. So we can uh, have very young players. What's important is to develop the coordination skills so they can move around, jump, uh, slide, and catch the ball in order to identify the trajectory. And in a progressive way, we can build them. It can, at a global level, we can see the more uh, finer skills in the game. I've also worked on ice sports, and that requires a lot of discipline. And what's important there is to first have the fundamental uh, needs in order to uh, start an Olympic career. Yes, actually, we need a, a very good structure. How many athletes have been working from the moment this program started? I showed you one idea. We have seeing all the different pieces that are part of this structure. We just, with the Avenir clubs, who are in charge of the youngest ones, with these Avenir clubs, we have been able to identify those who are still developing. And we can see who are the hope players. And with these structures we have like 20 athletes and besides that we also have junior athletes senior athletes young seniors so there are like 15 or 20 athletes and in at INSEP we also have like 15 Olympic athletes in parallel we have some uh, who work in private clubs so those who are part of this uh, Olympic level are there. Yeah, you can tell that this is a structure where everything needs to work really well and you need to articulate all of this work. How many people are working in your organization in order to articulate this structure? And we have different structures. 
we have like two or three co badminton coaches besides those who are part of the physical preparation. And well, the idea is to have automated tools in order to have everything done automatically. So this can be adapted to every level in order to do a long-term follow-up. I was uh, listening to you and I imagine the whole uh, process of analysis that you do throughout time from the moment that you, uh, students are little until they are uh, high performance athletes for competition. So which aspects do you think affect the most in the evolution of athletes outside of the court? I mean? And I'll, besides uh, training sessions, what could affect athletes? What I have observed is that many athletes who have won Olympic medals have built their uh, lives thanks to a high performance. The problem that I have with this is that they always need to be motivated in order to keep going. Those who are, are living that context are always looking for an Olympic medal and not everyone can win that. So you need to have a general strategy that needs to be very well set. If I see at an early stage that the athlete is autonomous, the way he um, works, uh, he can actually, uh, if I notice that he can actually become a, a champion, I also see if they are educated enough so we can actually, so this athlete can actually understand that if he wants to become a champion, it's important to build uh, these uh, within themselves. It's, you are not, well, you will not uh, become a champion if you just train 24 seven. That's right. Well, I have a question here. It says, how can you move from the digital uh, data to practical uh, information. Who's going to translate this work and accompany coaches and athletes? I think that it's, I think that I said this at the end, but I think it's important for comments to come from the coach. The, this data need to be used in a practical way by the coach for the athlete. All of this should always uh, be used with the coach's affirmation. If I play badminton and I have a m model from the federation, to me that would be the best solution. But for this to be practical, we need to progressively make athletes understand and we sometimes need to make athletes ask uh, questions to the coach so coaches can also draw conclusions so this shouldn't just be questions for uh, scientists because they're not in charge of this coaches are the ones who need to clearly state what they can do in order to achieve a specific goal right i have one more question that i wanted to ask you uh Personally speaking, I have noticed that we are uh, not not talking so much about ro robotic uh, athletes who just repeat, repeat, repeat. But we're more talking, we're talking more and more about uh, athletes who who actually think more. What do you think about that? I'm not sure if I understand. To the question well we're not uh, creating athletes that don't self-reflect and just re do what they're told but we are uh, training uh, athletes who uh, think more about the game is that so yes that's right I think the data are there to help us make decisions like video analysis 
or statistics. That's all just to give us an idea of what the opponent can be like, but then the tactics, technique, all, all of that is personal and that's very linked to the competition, to the technical and physical aspects. So we can, we'll never be able to have a model that will be easy for everyone. Systematically speaking, we need to adapt everything to the athlete, depending on what we have. So I think that data are there in order to improve and make athletes uh, work better. And then it's, it would be a more like uh, playing a chess, like it's technical, tactical, and to know how to play your opponent. So data is not going to play, athletes are going to play. So we also have the fun part, the game. So sometimes that also helps uh, better decision making. Thierry, what kind of players are we going to see in the next Olympic Games uh, of France coming from the French Federation? If there are going to be different players Yes, if they're going to evolve in a different way. I uh, hope so, I hope so, that they will be different, that their ability to manage their opponents will be different, and they will be more prepared. in order to make it more difficult to our opponents. Very good, thank you, Thierry. We have reached the end of this webinar. I don't know if you have some final thoughts, thoughts that you would like to share with our coaches and our audience who have, who have joined us today. Thank you very much for uh, listening to me. I really hope that my presentation was uh, fruitful and it can help you focus on the game and technique and that it was interesting for you. Thank you very much once again for inviting me. So I can quickly explain uh, all of these to uh, the badminton uh, family and badminton Panam. Thank you very much uh, for such an interesting talk. As always, it is very enriching to talk with you and analyze different topics from current badminton. Thank you, Thierry. To our badminton family, we invite you to our next webinar entitled Club Development. This webinar will be streamed after a short break and it will start again on May 3rd at 3 p.m. Lima time when we will have the pleasure uh, to welcome Ben Lee from the United States and Kevin Wood from Barbados. On behalf of Badminton Panam, we thank you for your participation and we hope you like this session. Greetings everyone, take care and see you soon.